guys, how are you? So, September 14th, Paris Hilton released her documentary. It tells all about her life and experiences and things that she go went through, everything that made her who she is today. All right, I'm just letting you all know there's gonna be some spoiler alerts. There really is, but we're gonna go through the high points, the low points, and lessons that you can learn for yourself today. Um, so let's just go through the documentary. I'll give a full summary and then we'll get to you, what you can learn. I'm Dr. Dee Dice Boselin, serving you pop culture seasoned with wellness and wisdom. Let's go. Paris Hilton's documentary. So it starts off with her mom and dad. And it's really interesting to know that her dad was one of eight children and the first five, they inherited millions upon millions upon millions, and the last three didn't inherit that much at all. So that means her mom and her dad, they had to work for everything they had. Let's just be honest, they probably did, he probably did get maybe half a million, some sort of million, he got something, and plus he got the Hilton name to help him, so we will not deny that. But they went on to do not too bad for themselves anyway. Paris was a beautiful girl and her dad called her Star as a nickname and they had cameras on her all the time. But honestly, she was more of a little tomboy. She really embraced that part of her. She loved animals, just a really sweet young girl. And then what happened, and there, when they, they, she became a teenager, they moved to New York. And New York, they describe the lifestyle, I don't know nothing about it, as it being more like a socialite lifestyle. And Paris also recommended that she um, talked about going to Catholic school for the whole time. And well, when she was in New York, they went to, she went to finishing school where they learned etiquette, how to be a lady. Fancy, right? I want to learn etiquette and how to be a lady, right? <laughs> anyway, they learned all that. And when I say they, her and her sister Nikki. And at some point in there, Paris began to rebel. And when I say rebel, she would sneak out and stay out all night. We don't know if she got into drugs or not. They did not say that in the documentary. I can assume that she at least tried some. That's the assumption I want to make. I don't know. But she definitely was staying out all night. Parents didn't know where she was and she was just going against everything that they stood for. She li were, they lived a very conservative life where appearances meant a lot. And she was definitely embarrassing them, one, and also just totally making them worried and rebelling. I could imagine the conversations they had with her as a parent, uh, parent to child, Paris girl, you gonna pull together? Yes, mom, I promise I won't do it again. And next day she's like out and gone. And probably didn't even care what they said. Either way, it was a mess. Even her sister Nikki would tell on her because she was worried about Paris too. And Paris didn't seem to care. She was maybe a narcissist already. I don't know, what, I, I love Paris. Let me just let you all know. But let's just be honest, there's some narcissism in there. And it seems like even back then, she didn't really seem to care what her family felt, what her sister felt. She was really focusing on her desire to be out in the streets, running it. Um, parents got super frustrated with that and ended up sending her to, um, it's called an emotional growth school. Several of them, which of which many of them she ran away from. The last one they sent her to, was called Provo Canyon, Canyon School. And at this school, turned out maybe that one was like the, the top of those kind of schools because at this one, she was, um, there was medication that she needed to take. And for a while there, she was taking it. Then she stopped taking it and got into big trouble. They even put her in like a solitary confinement for 20 hours, which was super traumatic for her. She also mentioned that she had some physical and emotional abuse um, during this time at this school, which is not cool. And all this she never told her parents about. And after she left Provo, at, it sounds like she left, she was there for 11 straight months and she left and was just like, I am never going, going to depend on my parents again. And this is what launched her into this desire to become 
Paris Hilton, the Paris Hilton we know. But the experience at Provo left her very fearful, with trust issues, with anxiety, and even having nightmares. She also mentioned that how it made her shy and how it made, gave her a desire to want to be perfect. Definitely affected her. And let's, oh, but, and I said, she just didn't want to be depending on her parents anymore. And she set her sights on to becoming super independent and super wealthy. And that she did. Listen, this young woman, and before I mention, she also set goals that uh, at a certain monetary amount, 100 million, that is when I'm going to be happy. And when she reached 100 million, she realized that happiness wasn't there. So she set the goal further. She didn't decide like, okay, well, maybe I'm looking on money to make me happy. No, 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 no. She just set go for her. So now she wants to be a billionaire and feel like maybe being a billionaireist will make her happy. We'll see. Anyway, so Paris went on to amass a great deal of wealth though. She has 19 different product lines. Her perfume line alone has grossed about 3 billion her perfume line, fragrance line alone, has grossed about three billion in sales. She has um, makeup and different things, and skincare. I'm pretty, yeah. She has makeup and skincare, or does she have makeup? I know for sure she has skincare though. And of course, she is a DJ. We probably know about her. She's one of the top DJs out there. She demands a million dollars per gig, right? Just to show up and play some music, cutting and scratching. She is actually pretty good. I've seen her DJing and jumping around and all those things. A million dollars, that's what she gets for that. So she has really amassed a lot of wealth for that, for herself. But guess what? She is still not happy. And why? Because she has a whole lot of unresolved issues related to this time at poor Provo, Provo, this detention center for kids, for troubled youth. And um, looks like she is launching a mission to really end this kind of treatment for kids. But based on her, just the, her, the things that have affected her because of this, um, she said um, she getting married, she'd be forced to grow up. So she's stuck in being young. She feels like her fans are her real friends. Um, that sounds a little strange. She loves animals more than she loves people. What I neglected to mention as one of her biggest accomplishments, we'll use a quote unquote accomplishment, since leaving Parvo and going out, Provo and going out to create her Paris Hilton brand and empire is she is the original, considered to be the OG influencer. Like, yes, before Paris, I mean, we just, I don't know, we just didn't care as much about, I mean, we cared about them. I don't know, there was something that she did that, just, that made us really, it was the combination of her being beautiful to the standards that we have here in America and kind of, dumb. She played dumb because, I mean, you can't amass this amount of wealth and be, be dumb like that. Let's just be honest. So we know that was an act. At least I hope y'all knew that was an act. Anyway, and um, just amass this great amount of wealth. She, she became like the influencer before her. That, that's just what we don't know any influencers before her like that, you know, just famous for being famous. And that's what she did. <laughs> And here's a factoid. During the documentary, she said she spends 16 hours on social media alone. 16. That's a whole lot of. That's a whole lot of time. Anyway, um, somebody used a quote on I can't remember whose account I saw it was. Um, said that this is a story of a woman that has everything and nothing. That's kind of like what Par was going on with Paris. And let me tell you why. So based on from her experience at Porvo, where she was essentially emotionally and physically abused, she has what I am pretty sure is PTSD. And 
she used this persona of being a dumb blonde um, to cover up in this weird voice. Hello. I can't even do it. To cover up some of the deep pain that she was feeling. She adopted a whole persona to cover this up. And as my girl Shallon would say, the psyche will not be ignored. And it's coming out because hurt people will hurt people. And um, the people that would help her, she felt um, she couldn't trust them. Her parents, she felt she couldn't trust them. The people, because of course her parents sent her there. Did I tell you all? When she was heading off to Porvo, they actually did like a, it was like a guerrilla warfare or something. Came in the dead of night, snuck into a room and snatched her away while her parents stood in the hall crying, weeping because they were just, felt that they were at their wits end with her, that they had to come and get somebody to snatch her and take her away. I want to know some of them things that she was doing. She ain't say, but I want to know. Anyway, so the people that she felt she could trust, the counselors at Porvo, they end up hurting her, mistreating her, and totally cross the line between tough love and abuse. Bottom line, that they did. So that's one of the effects of Paris's life. The two, second part is Paris's responsibility in all this and just really how you can bring it around to yourself too. During none of this time did I see Paris take any responsibility for her actions. She admitted that she was off running around, but she didn't really say that, you know what, maybe the rules weren't that bad. I mean, they couldn't have been that bad, honestly. She didn't say that she's been abused by her parents. The only thing she said was they had a very strict conservative household and she that was a her stilo and she wanted out. That's it. I mean, listen, it's going to be normal as a teen to want to rebel against your parents. That's a natural growth process. It's a natural stage of developing into adulthood. As parents, you have to recognize that, yeah, your kids are not going to agree with everything. You may have that one child, maybe Nikki, that is fine with everything. She's not rocking the boat. This is who she is, and she loves it that way. Um, but you may have a parent that is like, uh-uh, this is not mine. And the parents may need to just acknowledge that and just let them know that, hey, you know what? I see that you're not really for everything we're for, but let's see where we can come, with some, come up with some middle ground while you're still here living in my house. Doesn't look like they may have had that conversation. Or maybe they did, and Paris was just like, I don't care. I don't want none of it. I need to be out in the streets. Um, who knows? But let me tell you all, as you all are developing and trying to find your own way, you cannot just throw out every single thing that your parents have taught you just because you want to blow, go your own path. It's okay to look at it and really judge it critically, not just decide it's all wrong and that's it. Because guess what? These people have lived a whole life with the same DNA, well, very similar DNA, that you have in your body. No one else has this similar DNA, unless you're an identical twin, but y'all are going through the same phase at the same time. But nobody else had gone ahead of you with this DNA. And you need to be able to rely on their expertise and the time that they've spent on this earth. And you can't just throw away all their ideals just because for the sake of rebelling. That doesn't make any sense. You gotta be wise. And I don't know, it seems like that's what a little bit of what what um, Paris was doing. I, it doesn't feel like she was abused by her parents. She didn't mention that. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll go on to the, the next part where um, don't suffer in silence. When you're going through these things, don't suffer in silence. She did not mention anything to her parents at all what she was going through. It's now that this document it's now that this documentary has come out or doing the filming of it, she mentions it to her mom. And her mom was a little shocked. I don't know, I couldn't I'm not a body reader like that, so I don't know what her what her reaction meant, but it looked like she had never heard of this before. But what she said was, if we had known about it, you, your mom your dad and I would have come out there and gotten you. And Paris even agreed to that. She's like I know that I know you would have. So she knew her parents um, would have come and gotten her. For whatever reason, she chose to stay there. 
who knows? Listen, I really feel at the end, this was a very, this was a young woman that wanted to rebel against everything and threw everything away, didn't have, wasn't even thinking much about what her parents, um, that her parents loved her and cared for her. I mean, there's a lot of people that have gone through that story before. But remember, if you're going through that right now, please back up a little bit and be rational and make sure that you're not going in with the my parents hate me um the people that are uh, my the adults around hate me all my family hates me and thusly this is what i'm gonna do make sure you don't fall into that trap and don't let pride take over like where you feel that oh because i'm this or oh, i'm the star athlete so i can't go and tell anyone that somebody's hurting me oh i'm the smartest girl and I can't tell anybody that I've messed up like I did, that I've slept around with 16 guys and now there's no hope for me. That you can't, you can't do that because what that does, that sets you up to be a victim, to use different things, different crutches to live. Kind of like how Paris, she um, set herself up because she felt that um, she couldn't trust anyone during this time. So now she's adopted this persona just to cover everything. She felt that no um, no one would even, let me talk, let me see what she, she felt she couldn't even tell this story of abuse because she wanted to protect her brand. She did. She cared more about her brand than sharing this real story about herself. That seems a little crazy. I mean, but we all have done that, right? We just feel that we're not, we want to protect something about ourselves so we don't want people to look at us differently. We all do that and Paris did that. And But I'm glad she did decide to share this story of abuse. It's not a lot of stuff that a lot of us can relate to because let's just be honest, us common folks, <laughs> I'm sure that wilderness school costs money. I'm sure that Parvo school costs money, a whole lot of money that, um, <laughs> Um, I know my parents would not be able to afford. They'd probably end up just shipping, shipping me back to Jamaica or something like that if I was over here causing them problems. That's what I'm thinking. Anyhow, that's Paris Hilton. I have one more theory too, though. I'm going to have to throw it out there. Now, this is a smart businesswoman. This Parvo thing. Um, I'm wondering if she just threw it out there right now just, you know, to rebrand herself. There Now, before she was so perfect, so untouchable, and she had to dig deep into her experience to say, let's share this. Maybe I couldn't read her mom's reaction because her mom already knew about it. And they've already dealt with it as a family. They've mended their relationship, and they're just telling us for the sake of marketing. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, that's Paris. Love her. And watch the documentary. I find it to, found it to be interesting enough. It introduced me to a life that I didn't know anything about. All right. Guys, take care. See you later. And see you next week. And remember, I got you. Peace and love. Can't forget love. Bye.